Um, if I remember right, I believe it was in January. Never been to Oark in my life, so we traveled up the mountain and had a little rain coming down. Didn't think much about it. Everybody said, hey, it's all good to go. So we take three basketball teams up there, get to the top of the mountain, get through one game and uh, get ready to start the senior high girls game. And at that point, a state trooper comes into the gym and says, you need to get everybody out. The roads are getting slick. And I was thinking, well, it was nice when we left. It's a little sprinkle. What's the deal? It was, there was a chance of snow that day whenever we came back or whenever we went up there. They were, they were deciding whether or not to play. I think we got through like the first quarter maybe. I don't know. It's been a while. And they just called it and said we'd have to leave. And on the way back down the, or yeah, down the mountain, uh, the ice started coming down and uh, it started getting real thick on the road. But to go down the mountain, you got to go back up. So we're traveling up and around a curve and all of a sudden we feel the back of the bus go light and slide sideways. I knew being a bus driver that was a bad sign. So uh, we stopped the bus and we're jackknifed in the middle of the road and decide we're stuck, we can't get any further. And at that point, um, you could have heard a pin drop on the bus. Nobody was saying a word. It was uh, deathly quiet. Whenever the, we came around the corner, the bus just started slowly sliding off. It was just a straight drop off on the right side, you know, just a few trees. So uh, we unload all the kids off the bus. And the one thing that stuck out my mind was, since I was jackknifed in a uh, curve coming downhill, that anybody could be sliding down the, down the hill at any point. So we took the kids and put them up above the bus. And uh, everybody's just kind of sliding down the road, down to where all the parents are, because we all got to get, get rides with them. So the coaches say, well, all the, all the girls can go first. And uh, all the guys had to uh, stand out there while it was the ice was coming down and everything. We waited and then we all piled up into like two or three vehicles, old ba boys basketball team. I remember Coach Holland um, when we first stopped and he was going to get off the bus and see how slick it was. And uh, so he walked around my side of the bus and about that time his feet went out from under him and he went up, you know, three foot in the air and landed flat on his back and all the kids were watching and just rolling and pointing and laughing at him. I thought, well, that's what you get. You suck me driving, you had to go check for the ice. So uh, that was a, a high point. And so we left the bus there, and we decided we needed to walk back down the hill to get back. We walk about a half mile, and here comes this blazer. It comes down and picks us up, and there's this lady. And um, she said, oh, you guys need a ride? And we said, yeah, we need a ride back to the OR gym. And she said, all right, we'll get in. So there were three of us there, and we piled in. We noticed that she'd been to the grocery store, and behind her seat was a 12-pack of beer. And uh, unfortunately, there was like six of them gone, and those cans were in the floor. So I thought, maybe I would have been better off walking back to the gym than riding with this lady that's been drinking and taking me back home, taking me back to the gym on ice. But she got us there in one piece. We experienced our uh, sleep in a gymnasium that night. I'd never slept in a gym. I did realize that I could pull the wall pads up and over the railing, and I used that as my bed, which uh, was a little more comfortable than some people had sleeping on the bleachers or sleeping on the floor. Slept on the bleacher at the top. It was me and Brandon on the other side of the bleachers, and then everybody else was laying in the floor and then on the other bleachers. So it was kind of quiet over there. Nobody was messing with us. Um, the only food we had was whatever they sold us out of the concession stand, which most of the kids didn't come with you know, any money, so we ran a huge tab that night. I don't even remember eating. I remember one of the, uh, one of the strangest things I saw that next morning, we were all sitting in the gym, just kind of laying there, reliving the events the night before, and this big pot belly pig that came by the front door of the gym and stood there and looked in at us, and I said, well, there's a sight you don't see every day, is a, a pot belly pig on a school campus, but it happened in Oark. And I don't know. It was just a lot of fun. It turned out to be a lot of fun. What could have been really bad? Yeah, anytime now. I make sure I try to schedule the OR games 
before January or February so I don't get up there and get caught. Or if it's raining, we don't leave Scranton. We make sure we stay here if it's raining and going to Oark. Those are some valuable lessons I learned.